Hi everyone, it's Chris from chriswatsonmusic.com. We're going to have a look at the guitars now in my new track I've been working on, which is called Drowning. And the guitars in this are pretty straightforward, they're pretty simple. There's really only three main guitar parts in the entire song. Uh, you'll see here though we've actually got five tracks of guitars. Uh, it's because after I finished recording the main guitars, I decided to add an extra couple of layers just for a, a bringing in one of the sections of the song. Uh, we've got the guitar up here, guitar one, which is I've labeled Echo Clean Crunch. It's called Echo because this guitar is going through the echo effect in Reason 6. Uh, and the Clean Crunch is the name of the patch that I, I created in Podfarm that I've recorded. Uh, I always like to put the titles of the tracks in, of the the tones in the actual track name just makes it a little bit easier for me to reference and if I want to go back and, and re-record any of the guitars I know what patch it was that I was using. Uh, another tip that I've mentioned in a previous video is I always save these guitar patches into the project folder as well so I know exactly where they are and can, I can always get back to them really easily. So we've got the main riff that comes in, it's only in for a couple parts of the song. Um, as I said it's called, it's using the clean crunch patch. We've got the main guitars down here for the song in the chorus and then for the rest of the song this one bc stands for breaking clean it's another one of my my custom tones and we've got a also the other guitar track which is the clean tail uh, again another one of my my custom tones now we see here i've got an extra couple of tracks of guitars after i'd, I'd finished recording the main main parts of the guitars i decided to put some sort of chord washes in to one of the sections just to, to fill out the sound a little bit and so I, I did them basically as, as new tracks i could have i could have popped them in here but they are a little bit different they've got some more more reverb on them some extra effects and i, I guess i could have automated the reverb send but it was just easier and faster for me to put them through on, on the separate tracks so let's have a listen to this first guitar track here this is the the, the riff it's just a, an octave uh, little melody line and this is going through the clean crunch so let's just have a listen to this bit of guitar by itself love that ping pong delay on the echo i think the echo is a fantastic effect um everyone that seems to have reason six that's on the you know, have a look at the propeller heads forum uh it's getting used everywhere it's a really lovely sounding echo now for those who are interested let's go and have a look at the actual tones that i've used to well the way i've managed to get this guitar tone so here's my pod farm uh that it's you know the basis for all my guitar tones it's running through my ux2 into the pod farm into reason and let's have a look at the actual amp settings themselves it, it's a it's a dual amp setup again i this is something i like to do to is to run the the parallel amp setups um you can get a much thicker sound a, a much more dynamic sound really using the multiple amp setups if you have a look they're quite fairly fairly similar tones, but there is a couple of variations. We've got um, the the first channel that we've got going here has a bit more bass and a bit more drive on it, whereas the second channel that we've got going through here, oh, much less bass. So it's a lot drier, and it's got a bit, little bit less drive on there as well. Something to take into account when you're setting up a, a new amp rig or a new new tone setup in Podfarm software. Um, is the way that it sets up the positioning of the mics. Now, if you go over to the cab tab, you'll see you can pick your mics here, but there's this room option, and that's basically how far back the microphone is from the amp. Me personally, I like to record all my, my amp tones, and I'd do this in the real world as well if I was using analog equipment, is close mic'd. It's something I've always done. Um, if I wanna add a bit of extra room to it, I'd normally do that in the processing afterwards. Um, it, it's really up to you. You may like the sound, but me, I, I don't. I, the default's about, I think it's about 30% sets it up as. And just with the way that the pod farm works, to me, the room's much too bright. 
So as soon as I add a new amp, first thing I do is I go in and bring it in so it's close mic. Uh, the other variation in this, these two rigs besides the, the preamp settings is you'll see I'm using some different mics um, on the two different amps as well. And I just found that you know, the different mics, they, they have very different tonal characteristics and the blend for this rig of these two, the 421 and the, uh, the 57, which is obviously an SM57, uh, worked really well together. So that's how I've got those guitar tones for, for that particular track. Now let's have a listen to the main part of the guitar and then we'll go back to the other parts in a second. So if we go to the chorus, when the chorus kicks in, and let's just have a listen to uh, these parts of the guitar um, and so you can see what they sound like. Okay, so we've got two different guitars here, uh, playing two two different parts. This goes back to the whole big guitar theory that I've talked about before, uh, having two guitars playing similar parts, but usually different different areas on the guitar neck. Uh, in this case, one's playing a slightly different chord voicing as well. So let's have a listen to the main guitar part. This is just a really just sitting on a, an E chord and some variations of the E chord, and then sticking a B in there as well. So let's just have a listen. Whereas the other guitar is higher up the neck and is playing some slightly different voicings. <laughs> 